um, I'll be talking about collaboration, flexibility and sustainability in engagement. And um, I've been invited to present because I've been the consultant to Langer Rock's joint, joint venture in HS2 for Area North and working closely with Wessex and particularly Natasha, as well as the engagement lead for LM, Jane, who isn't here today, but um, I want to acknowledge her. Um, all having problems going forward with the slide. Hang on. There. Great. So I think my talk is quite high level in to case study in, in community engagement focus on is that you've lost me what have you lost okay great <laughs> yeah I just want to it, it's my thoughts on what made our piece of phase one successful and then what will fall out of that hopefully is how we apply this to future work and particularly that's that idea of how to make engagement sustainable so very briefly as background, we are, um, Area North is the sort of 80 kilometres of the route that goes through War part of Warwickshire, Solihull, Birmingham, Staffordshire. And um, with the Birmingham, the, the spur into Birmingham, there were some key sites in the centre. And we worked with many contractors, probably all the commercial archaeological contractors um, to, to cover multiple mitigation sites and so just a few of the highlights we had Foss Way which was an Iron Age Romano British um, site on the River Lem and um, you're looking at a corn dryer there Park Street which is this major 19th century burial ground with over 10,000 individuals not as big as um, St James Gardens but also featured on the on the BBC documentary then Curzon Street so the Grand Junction Railway terminus and the and the London to Birmingham Railway roundhouse um world's first roundhouse and a paleo landscape beneath and then Coles Hill and Coles Hill Manor which was at the sort of um, junction where the Birmingham Spur comes off on the phase one route and a site that Wessex have undertaken. And there, there was um, prehistoric archaeology with burnt mounds, paleo channels and pit alignments and Iron Age roundhouses, um, a cremation cemetery, uh, Roman, Romano-British enclosure ditches and fields and some, some Roman archaeology. And then the Colesville Manor was this late medieval and post-medieval motive manor and gardens. So just reflecting on the whole thing right from the design stage, those are the, I'm going to have one slide for each, a sort of confidence and trust, good relations, and then the key thing, the flexibility. So with the first, with confidence and trust, we uh, worked closely with LM. So as consultants, we worked closely with LM to understand the um, historic environment research and delivery strategy and how engagement fits in and, and of course it's a really central thread and should be woven into all of the mitigation and although we all understand and I'm preaching to the converted to say that the the public benefits are huge it's not always sort of um, written into every WSI written scheme invest investigation or method statement for archaeological works that your engagement gets incorporated in the way that Hertz said it would. So this took a lot of communication to all the multiple teams and other um, organisations who were involved in the project. So even within HS2, there was the historic environment team, but there was also the community engagement team, the skills and employment, and then comms teams as well, um, as well as others like interface managers and the press and then of course the multiple subcontractor organizations that we've seen and then a complex group of stakeholders societies museums young archaeologists clubs local planning archaeologists historic england but of course with the burial grounds it was the church as well was really um important and so um what we did was 
started off with some listening exercises. We did a lot of meetings and we had workshops where we talked to stakeholders and the client teams and then sort of tried to um, Im- 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 embed the engagement not only so the approach then was to try to incorporate what we understood some of the gaps and some of the needs were across the region into the works we were doing um, and we developed this sort of two-pronged approach with the mitigation sites where we had engagement as part of each mitigation site but also then we we took a route-wide package with this four-stranded approach which was like community excavation, using local museums as as hubs rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, um, revitalizing networks, so sort of giving materials to societies and people who need them. And then the fourth one was exhibitions. Um, and that route-wide package was was taken on by Wessex. And, and then it became a collaborative effort between the client HS2 and the principal contractor, our client Langer Rourke Murphy, along with us WSP as consultants and Wessex as, as that key contractor for this route wide package. And what the aim was was to draw together the the this part of the route as almost like a single pro- project. And so the images I've got there are just three examples of where these collaborations with stakeholders and others worked so the first is oh it's misspelt that's not great the Colesville Town Hall exhibition so we've got the mayor opening um, a permanent exhibition in the Colesville Town Hall which was really well received and attended um, and will be there for everyone to see Um, school sessions there were lots and lots of school sessions and they were very fruitful and also um, particularly in the Coles Hill and Water Orton area that was the sort of head teachers consortium that we collaborated with and there'll be more of that in this last phase of archaeological mitigation at Coles Hill and then the first the third image on the right is um, a key stakeholder was the, the Birmingham Science Museum the think tank and we'd collaborated with them all the way and uh, through COVID they got some funding to revamp one of their galleries so this is the find your future gallery and it's a permanent display um, on careers in science, technology, engineering and maths, so STEM. And two of the HS2 archaeologists are featured. Um, and there were also, of course, face-to-face talks um, and there was a conference, and there was an online exhibition and webinars and then lots of materials like reconstructions. So this is the, this is the sort of key, I think, that the core project team that we had you know a core team sort of taking responsibility for delivery and that trust that we'd built up through the workshops and the meetings enabled flexibility within this package which was essential in order to work around all the challenges which uh, were considerable so firstly I think the herds is really ambitious and that's a challenge um, I've already mentioned it, but there were multiple client teams and loads of stakeholders, and sometimes their interests were competing. Um, HS2, I guess, necessarily had to have a sort of broadcast media approach, and there were worries about anti-HS2 sentiment, as I'm sure we're all aware. So it wasn't so much social interaction, and for community engagement, that is challenging. And then, of course... COVID and the developing situation and all the restrictions around that so the flexibility was required and when I say flexibility I mean in a number of ways so the way the contract was set up the client Langer Murphy had confidence in the consultant and subcontractors abilities and what they would deliver and they had also the foresight to have a percentage budget for community activities at the outset it, as part of each mitigation and that gave a certain flexibility in in scope so you were able to have an activity plan that then you could work on the scope with so that the flexibility in the scope was really important because it allowed um, the activity to be dropped if they weren't working or do more if they were and also to be responsive because it's a slow burner the engagement around the archaeology so 
requests started coming in and they weren't always opportune you're like well we've done this come on we've got it we're moving on but you having that flexibility enabled Wessex to be able to respond um so we're looking at the images we've got an aerial view of the roundhouse at Coles Hill an example of one of the webinars and the Q&A sessions in talking about that social aspect they were really popular so that's Stu talking about a brick um some virtual reality that developed out of, um, you know, wanting to recon the, the interest around Coles Hill and then the YouTube st- series, which, oh, that was another of the challenges was working with the project protocols or the health and safety and how to get the videos online. And you, these are things that you might not necessarily know, apart, you know, if you write an activity plan, you don't know the, the, what you're going to come up against. Um, and so I want to hand over to Natasha to just give us a bit of a um, more of a sort of de- detail on a case study, which was this young archaeologist club that um, WSP and LM identified as a gap because there was no young archaeologist club in the region. Um, HS2 wanted engagement in Solihull, but there was no archaeology in Solihull. But through our stakeholder workshops, we'd met the the um, people who run the core, which is a, a community centre in Solihull. So I'll hand over to you, Natasha. Thank you, Mary. Can everyone hear me OK? I yes. Can. Brilliant. So, um, <laughs> Fab, as, um, as Mary said, I'm going to talk about the, um, the setup of a young archaeologist club. And for those of you who, um, who might not come across them before they are a club for eight to 16 year olds and they're run by local organizations or sometimes individuals and then um, they're kind of centrally managed by the council for british archaeology uh, and they're a bit a bit like scouts or something but for archaeology and um, they're, they're for children and they meet about once a month and they'll do an activity around archaeology so that's what we wanted to set up in the area and um, and to do this you know we needed a lot of flexibility and you know, um, and we needed the client to have trust in in WA to deliver. So we went about it. We started to do lots of consultancy work with um, organisations who we thought might be interested in potentially you know, leading on a YAC group. Um, and we did quite a bit of that. And um, this was during the pandemic as well. So a um, difficult time for organisations. And we were we're coming across a bit of hesitancy and I can I can understand why you know mid pandemic you probably don't want to jump in and and set up a young archaeologist club that you know hopefully would go on for for a very long time it is quite a big commitment so um, it became clear that just doing consultancy and hoping that someone would kind of jump in and run the run the yak group with it it, it wasn't going to happen uh, we needed to you know really simplify the process and make it um, easier for people and to show that there, there was an audience there, there was a need and it, the, an organisation could take it on and, and run it easily. So um, what we did is um, we kind of took a leap of faith and decided, you know, we, we just need to start running some sessions aimed at, you know, eight to 16 year olds and hoping, you know, as we go along and do these sessions, we'll generate lots of interest. We'll show that there is an audience out there and, um someone might think, actually, I can do this. This is quite simple and it would be a fantastic thing to have at our organisation. Um, so that's what we did. We um, started running online sessions with the Council for British Archaeology. So they hosted them for us on their Zoom account and supported us with all the, the bookings and in filling in forms and safeguarding. Uh, and these are a few images of, um, of some of the, the work we used on the online sessions. So we made it really engaging for children. We had lots of interactive activities. We used all the resources we'd created from other sites. So we have in the bottom corner, you've got the, the reconstruction of Colesville Hall. Um, we also did a reconstruction of Curzon Street. Um, we did a session with, um, with Mola on Park Street and the Victorians. We had a very popular Victorian quiz for that one. Uh, so lots of different resources. Uh, and then from, from doing that session, which booked out, it was very popular, the core, who had been identified from the beginning as a potentially interested partner, um, decided that actually they would be like, like to be quite involved. And then um, they started to attend some of the online sessions with us. So they wanted to see about, a bit more about what it was about. 
And with them attending the sessions, it really kind of demystified the process for them. And it gave them the confidence to think, actually, yes, we could run this. The, it's, it's not, it's not too complicated. We can do this. So um, we had Tracy on board, who's the archivist from, from the core in Solihull. And she did a great job of coming to the sessions and engaging. Um, and then throughout the process, we had to respond to the pandemic as well. So we started online during lockdown. But as the months went on, it became clear that, you know, it's sunny outside, it's lovely weather, uh, COVID restrictions are going away and the case numbers are going down. People want to be out and about. So for the summer sessions, we um, we did a session at the um, Castle Bromwich Gardens in Solihull. And that was an organisation that was um, kind of tied to the core. They'd run sessions there before. So um, they, were, they were linked. And that, you know, really COVID safe because it's outdoors and it's gardens. And so we ran sessions there and we did a slightly different format and we wanted to get the parents involved as well. So we invited parents and children to come along and we did a carousel of activities. So they did brick making, environmental archaeology, and they also did some building recording of the summer houses at, at Castle Bromwich. So we had a lovely session there. Um, and then again, adapting to, to things that were happening, uh, we decided for the last session, because I, I said we kind of do five different sessions and see how it goes. The last session, by this point, the core had taken on uh, the CBA, the Young Archaeology Club. We decided it would probably be better not to just run another session for the 15 children, but actually to support the core in getting some, some good publicity around the Young Archaeology Club and recruiting more children and just getting a bit of a buzz, generating interest in the community. So instead of doing a session, we did an archaeology takeover day um, at the course. So we had a film screening and we had a stand and we took over the foyer area and we just you know, had things going on for people just to, to wander in and see what's happening and do an activity and find out a bit more about the archaeology around Causal and the Young Archaeology Club. Um, and that went really well. So we, we generated really good interest. But um, all these things we were doing, it took a leap of faith from our contractors and uh, consultants to say go ahead and do it because what what I was proposing to do would not necessarily lead to the desired outcome of setting up a yak group it might have you know there might not have been an organization that said oh yes we will we're interested now we'll definitely do it but then um, you know we did it would have been good just to do sessions for, for children anyway but then um, you know that kind of trust in Wessex to deliver something good and also with the kind of flexibility to adapt the programme as we went along to the needs of COVID, but also to the needs of where the programme was at, was crucial in helping us set it up. So Thank I think you that very is, much. yeah, I'll hand back over to Mary. Brilliant. Yeah, and it's worth saying that um, what the one of the last pieces of engagement that Natasha's going to do is to be... And I, and I know that, that St Mary's have got resources up on the HS2 education pages, but we will, it might not be education pages, but we'll also be putting a lot of the these materials in very visual form for teachers and educators to use, the, the, all the illustrations and the VR and the reconstructions, aerial photos, and um, some of the schools, as you know, school sessions and feedback on those school sessions will be uh, available through the web pages. So um, last slide, uh, these have been, these points have been obliquely alluded to, I guess, through, through this presentation, but my thoughts on maximising public benefit through my experience with um, HS2 Area North have been that um, really, yes, the the key to these in, engagement is to is to activities is to sort of create that sustainable aspect so the flexibility you have to have the core team and you have to have the trust for it, for it to, to allow it to be flexible and the and the flexibility is essential for in, engagement um, and that sort of ensures a greater likelihood of success as well because then you're you know pe the people are engaged um, if it's successful, it generates spin-off projects, which this certainly did as well, um, which we haven't mentioned. But so it needs to be the practical point. Number two there is is sort of 
about handover and I think that needs to be in mind right at the outset because it would take so long years to build up a network of community groups especially when you you know arrive in an area that you don't necessarily know or understand so you don't have that intelligence so you need to think what's practical and um, it's not practical to think you're going to fully understand it and meet the community's needs they have to be really realistic about your scope and how you're going to hand it over and how that's going to be done and and make those partners at the outset Um, being interactive obviously helps with that and also drawing in a range of expertise Um, so whether it's museums and gallery backgrounds or educational um, heritage and arts engagement rather than just specialists archaeologists I think we've felt that that's all been really beneficial and and, um, enriches all the activities. Um, So expertise across the heritage sector, it reaches wide audiences, but then it also feeds back into archaeology to develop the discipline itself and and educational programmes. And that's it. I'd be really, uh, I'm really interested to hear if anyone does have any questions well, however they come through after the session.